Draco, I'ma have a flashback Digging through the dresser like fuck it, where my mask at? The mash back with the banger and damage shit And say fuck everything I learned in anger management Hop back on some east side banning shit And push a nigga's top back when I let the cannon spit Start planning shit, premeditation I'm in love with the streets again, rededication So, uh, can you tell us about like some of the, uh, the more crazier or like more scarier moments that you had when you was in prison? I think uh, Pelican Bay the first time, the first time at Pelican Bay was because, uh, okay, when you, I got there, I, I, just got, I, just, I had just got a cork and shoe. So I'm coming from the shoe. And back then, you in the Bay, you're going to go to Building 7 or Building 8 on BR if you got the shoe. If you got the shoe, you wasn't going to AR, you're going straight to BR. BR was the wild yard at the time. B yard is sectioned off in the fence. Every two building is a fence. So I was. So uh, I'm back here in eight block. They, like, it's like a bedrock. You got to do 90 days back here. So when I get up there, it was on with the blacks and the Southsiders. And it, and it all stems from one of the homies from Broadway that was in Cork and Shoe with us. He had something he had happened with him and some Southsiders a year ago. I don't know if you ever heard about that. But anyway, Crusher, he up here now. So, you know, that's the thing about it, too, what people don't know. You're dealing with these Southsiders, they don't forget shit. They passing kites. They, You know how they roll. They, This dude is up there, get him. Something happened that he did years ago. And, okay, hey, I remember this fool. I, I, something he did to a Southsider. So, well, let anyway. me hit you with a question. Is, yeah. that something that, is that something that you can go into or you prefer not to share? Uh, yeah, we can get into that. That's okay, cool. well, so so give us some give us some back uh, uh, some background on that story. So what what happened? All right, I meet the homie from Broadway in the shoe. Uh, I'm back. We back in Cork and Shoe in '92. He see me like, hey, what up? What we talking? Cause some crip shit, black shit, whatever. And I know what he was in there for. I think he was in there for. I think he supposed to had a murder on one of them. I think he supposed to got into a uh, something happened in Cork and Shoe, and he with his hands. Right, and they got hands, and he, they was fighting on a little shoe yard head up, and I guess what well, he didn't need to do, hit his head in the wall and die, whatever. So he was back on the undetermined shoe. He was getting out the shoe. He got he actually got out the shoe before me, so he went to the bay before I did. So then I, I had to stay in Cork, and I was in like I said, I was in there the whole time with ninety two rise. I was sitting back there in Cork and shoe, uh, four eight two left, something like that. So now when I got the shoe, I'm going to the bay. As soon as I get up there, we on lockdown. The blacks and the South Sider. What happened? The homie from Broadway came up here. They got word. They tried to take off on him in the, uh, in the infirmary or something like that happened before I got there. So when I get there, we on lockdown because of that. Now, that triggered a whole bunch of other events. You know how I go. They try to they try to bring it to the homie from Broadway. He did his stuff again, I heard. But now, it's on. Right. So now, I pull up. It's been a couple of incidents happened before I get there. So now, I'm in the back, building eight back here doing a modified program for 90 days now i'm up here it's on and it's a trip because you could be in the cell and you just get here and you hear these dudes over here sewing on a locker you hear them you hear and these cats had hacksaw blades like like hacksaw blades so these cats was cutting off pieces of the locker bro right so let me ask you a question i was in i was in a situation like that one time my damn self man and is that scary knowing that the dude next to you is uh putting together some cold ass knives and shit yes that's why i say that my scariest moments be there man because i didn't i didn't been to a lot of level four prisons on me and it's been on different shit but when you right next door to him and you know like that this is what's gonna happen as soon as they open this door say child time is cracking He's right here. And I'm hearing him every night. And, and these dudes next to me was the dudes who had the keys. They like had the keys of the pod. So I'm like, okay, they coming out. And it's a trip because uh, these guards, man, they set us up so much. Just like all the setups that went on in Cork, they did in the Pelican Bay too. People didn't really speak on it too much in Pelican Bay, but they was doing, they was popping doors. They'd do it like this. Okay, I was in the cell with the homie from Swamps, homie Spider, and next to us, they pop seal like you might come out for the shower and they'll accidentally let two south siders out or four south siders out. Now you out there with your boots on, trying to do your stuff, fighting for these dudes, and you know, they shoot at the same time. Right. That was scary to me back then because you gotta dodge what they bringing at you, then you gotta worry about this too. So you just all you can do is, you know what I mean? Just so happened, bro, the whole time I was up there, 
it just never happened when I was out. It just, right. it just, it just, I just, I guess I was just blessed, bro. But I've seen a lot of people walked out the cell to go to medical, get a ducket or something like that, or go to the showers, and then they always do it. Oh, accident! Oh, and now all of a sudden, this one black dude out. You got four soft siders coming at this cat. And he got to do his thing. Right, and so, so, so my my um my viewers understand. This is at a time when. The program is slammed down and everybody's locked down. Yeah. And so they they letting allegedly or accidentally a person go to the shower somewhere yeah. and then they'll accidentally pop the door of people who they know it's in a uh, it's a war going on with yeah. and let four or five of those guys out to jump on the one dude. Man, I seen my boy from Pomona's young cat. He came back from medical ducket and it was a south side that he actually knew from the streets. They used to run with him. There was a couple of sales from each other. But what they do, he come back, he stop at the hot water dispensary, get him some hot water. Pelican Bay steps is like, it's not like the 270 designs, like like that, it's a, it's, it's a 180. Pelican Bay is more like, I think what's built like Pelican Bay is New Fossil, the same way, because you and then, cause you got the little steps right here, then you got the thing, and then it's the one level right here, then you got other steps go to the next level. So the day room kind of steps down, a couple steps down there. So anyway, he, he come to Steph's man and he going to his cell and you got these dudes two cells away from him. And they hit both of those doors. And at the time, you know, we don't sleep in the daytime in prison. You up all day. So my, we, we on lockdown. My celly was sleeping. So I'm on guard. So we had to always be like that. So I'm just be posted right here on the toilet. You know, the toilet when you first walk, you know how it is. Right. And Pelican Bay doors got a bunch of little holes like Calipad and, and the hole. Like a whole bunch of little doors on it. Holes in the, I mean, holes in the door. So it's important, we always have to study. So I'm in there reading, I remember this day, I was reading something on this cat, Stalin, right? I was reading something on Stalin, and the homie came in, and he like, hey, what up, bro? Like, what up? And next thing you know, I hear the doors open up, and like, get him, get him! And they out trying to rush the homie. Mm -hmm. And this dude in the tower, bro, he don't pull out the block gun, or that other HK thing, that he pull out off his hip, the right. pistol. And I'm, I'm upstairs looking, because he's down the funders. I'm watching the dude in the tower, Boom! Boom! And I was like, that shit to me was like scary as fuck at the time. I just like, because you got to fight and you got this dude, he just pulled out his gun and started busting. Right. You know what I'm saying? The, the door wasn't open for the other guards to run in. So I'm like, look at this. So this is Pelican Bay, early 93. So do you think like any experience in any of that type of stuff, you know, uh, left you or, or anybody that possibly seen that stuff with like, with, with P, PTSD? I mean, how did, I that, know, how, did, how did that affect you? I mean, seeing something like that, you know, what's it like? Like when you up there in a war zone and any day you can lose your life? Well, I don't know, man. I, uh, I don't know if everybody going to speak the truth and tell you how they really feel about that. Everybody want to keep their image up and being like, I was scared. No, you know, get that type of stuff, right? I think inside we all feel something like that. I think even with the South Side, I think they feel something about that as well. I think uh, at that time I was having to be in there with, I was in there with a bunch of OG cats too. OG, I was in there with a bunch of OG Crips and Bloods in there. And I think I spoke on if you are on my channel, I spoke on that on there. But so I was in there with cats that's still in prison to this day. You know what I mean? Right. So I don't know what they feel, but I know what I feel. In, in my celly, the homie from Compton, we was talking about like, damn, we was in there just be like, you know, boots on, one up, one down. And every time posted, we just ready. And then we hearing these dudes next to it. They every night, like they cutting on this damn locker. Right. I'm like, they got hacksaw blades, they sawing, and you got to worry about them. And all we got over here at the time was some plastic heat. We was just melting shit down, you know, that old the, milk the motherfucking deodorant thing and, and using uh, the razor thing with the razors on them. And these dudes over there. <laughs> yeah, cutting the metal lock. Yeah, if they come out with some bone crushers and we got some little plastic stuff, hope we can hit the right spot. What they got is going to do us, you know what I mean? So every time you come out for shower, it's like, I kid you not. I was like, every time it's time for, I hate a shower day. <laughs> I'd rather just bust down, meet me shower in the cell, but I got to go get a shower. And no, in your cell, they going to go in the locker in that shower by together. We're going to lock two of us in that shower. That's how they do it. They es whatever. And they wasn't escorting you then. They just opened the door. Right. Later on, they start put escorting to the shower. So they just pop your door. And coincidentally, they pop four outsiders doors. Like, oh, and now they're on the tier, and here we come. And they, and you, it's, if you're on the tier, you got to go. Right. You know what I mean, you can't just like go back and you say, oh, no. Nah. You know what I mean? Because you got to go. And that's how it works, bro. Yeah. So you had mentioned something um, to me about it was also a war going on in Pelican Bay with, with, with the blacks and the skinheads. 
Oh, yeah, that was the second time I was up there. That was on my last term. Uh, yeah, I was on the A-yard this time. And, uh, I think that was, like, 2016. No, no, my bad, my bad. I mean, I mean, 96. I'm tripping. I got out of 2016. Yeah, 90, 96. 96, 97. And a situation happened, man. You know, we got the quiet period. Certain time of night, turn early music down. 10 o'clock, everything go down. And mind you, like once I said, Pelican Bay Doors is not like... Uh, Ironwoods and Calipat. Well, Calipat got doors like Pelican Bay, but a regular door. They got all of them the holes. Right. So, actually, they had a. Uh, they had already started cutting people's speaker wires on their TVs, but we was hooking them up. Everybody's doing it back in there. Then the people's plugging into their radios and stuff. They was, you know, we figure out a way to do it, but it's not supposed to be no music. Period. So one night, man, uh, this dude, man, this was crazy. This dude is a non-affiliate, right? Used to be. Used to claim twenties. Used to be a supposed was a blood at one time, but now he run around. He's a Bible toter in prison. He's like with the, you know, he don't want no bullshit, but he got the Bible. So what he doing? Him in the cell. He there and there, they watching Mad TV one night, and the TV's up live past ten o'clock. I remember the homie from Backstreet. He was like, he's like, hey, can you, Mike, can I get a volume on that? And he didn't say nothing. And then uh, that thing. One other homie said, can we get some volume? Or well, Damu partner from uh, San Diego, Five Nine Brams. He's like, hey, can we get some volume on that? And nobody said nothing. So now the skinhead, and it's two skinheads up in there. It's quite a few of them in there, but it's two skinheads in there. And this little dude, they was from up north, from Yuba County or something like that. I mean, he got the big swastika on his forehead, and they, they blasted. They walk around with the black boots with the white strings and that whole skinhead, you know, that how they how they dress in there. And... uh the skinhead was actually trying to assist the brothers because he was like, hey, the man said, can we get some volume out there? And nobody said that. So when, when the skinhead spoke up, the homies from Long Beach like, what you say, cuz? You know what I mean? There was a couple of seals there. So now they going out with the skinhead. Now, you know how it is in prison. We see people with the swatch stickers and all that. Right away, we looking at them. We like, get this motherfucker. I can't wait to something happen and knock him down. We know how we talking there. Right. And they, and they was little dudes, homie. They wasn't no big, they was just little dudes, but they was representing, they was straight skinny. You know what I mean? But he was trying to be respectful and assist the brothers. Right. But being that we didn't really like this dude to begin with because your tattoos, your affiliation, we was already like, fuck him. So once he started speaking, the homies from Long Beach, the homies from Insane, like, cool, they got on his bumper. So then the next morning, we said, we we'll talk about that in the morning. All right, everybody got off the door. Everybody got off the door. The next morning, uh, they owed the homie when they they prep whatever it was, it was, it was a white dude out of Long Beach, and he's a skinhead out of Long Beach. But he then he go through and talk to the homies and like, okay, no, nah, it's cool, everything cool, we we'll deal with this, that, and the other. All right, everything's supposed to be, you know, squashed or whatever. You go to child Sunday morning breakfast, no Sunday breakfast in prison. What that's like? So everybody in now Pelican Bay, you know, they got guards everywhere in there, man. Of course, you going through the rotundas. They got them up there with the guns. They got them standing. They got, well, they didn't wear no guns, but they stand all in the child hall. They got gun tower here, gun tower there. And you can't get up until they tell you to get up. They're like first row. Or they at least like two or three tables at a time. So it's tension in the, in the child hall. We don't know. It's kind of tension because that, that situation, everybody think it's cool, whatever. So everybody is sitting down, and they call this row. So these dudes leave. That's the two homies from Long Beach, the insane homies. Just so happened, it's them two. <laughs> and the two skinheads, they get in the rotunda, the homies take off on them. The homies take off on them, bust on them in the rotunda. It go down right there. You hear the dude in the tower busting. Boom! Everybody sit down. So we still in the child house sitting down. Nobody got up. It was just it was just those two cells. It's a trip. They let those two go back. And they bust them. So they go to the hole. Now they coming through. They got everybody escorting everybody back to their cells. Okay, now. So it's on. So now we're on lockdown. It continue. Uh... They wanna they reps talk to the homies, this, that, and the other. The shit just kept going on. Go certain buildings go to the yard, other buildings down there go out there and test the waters, it go down. So, you know, it's something about Pelican Bay, man, that make people just ride. You know what I mean? Just the name. People just try to live up to the reputation of the prison name. You know what I mean? Kind of like San Quentin, kind of Nefosum in a sense, but you just like, I mean, this is Pelican Bay. So me being in Pelican Bay, I had that mentality. I was around there like everybody else, pants rolled up, boots tied up, busting down every day. Going through the whole program, you know, you a soldier now. You ready, ready for war because it's going down. But hey, hey, man, that was that was crazy. You know I mean, it got to the point to where every time they opened up a different uh, building to go to the yard, it went down to the point to all the skinheads off the yard. And it and, it, and it's it, what tripped. One thing I one thing I learned in that situation that pissed me off and that pissed a lot of people off that knew about it that uh, 
skinhead dude told the blood dudes, we ain't got nothing against y'all, it was just the Crips. And it was this one blood dude, he was like, that's on them, you know what I mean? We ain't got nothing to do with that. But other bloods was like, fuck that, you know what I'm saying? We black. And the brothers from up north, fuck that, it ain't just a Crip thing and a skinhead. Even though it was enough Crips on the yard that just did just deal with the skinheads, because it would never, never be more skinheads than Crips on the yard, you know, just, you know what I mean? So it was all gone, it was just regular white dudes on the yard. But the fact that this blood dude was going along with that, like, it's a crypt thing. What well, we black? You know what I mean? But they end up DP and dude getting him off the yard. But that was a cold situation up there at that time, bro. It was just it was continuous. And that was most of that was actually, bro. That was all the '97. Mm. That war lasted all the '97. So what about okay? You said um, you also experienced some some uh, frightening moments in Corcoran. Shoot, get, can you give us a little uh, rundown on that? Yeah, similar, very similar. Uh, Corcoran. For those who know, uh, okay, later on, I think the homie from East Coast got killed up there. I think like a T-Snake from 5-9, rest in peace. He got killed up there fighting, I think his name. But anyway, he was fighting. He was fighting the South Sider. That's who they shot and killed the neck. Now, before that happened to him, Corcoran been doing foul shit. Corcoran been setting us up there, sending us out there, and they be all of them out there. They do that, you know what I mean? And we be in there like, you know, we got to stick to the code. It's like, okay, before I'm out there, it happened. And that happened to me before, me and Marcelli. And this is what they should do. They'll start releasing for yard. They'll start like, okay, it come from, let's say, this way down the tier. And they'll get the four Mexicans, the Southsiders. One at a time. You strip out, go out there. You're out there by yourself first. And then here come your Marcelli. Strip out, cough, don't put your jumpsuit back on, or whatever your drawers and socks go out there. So... We know what's going to go down, so we're not even taking the whole jumpsuit. We're just going out there with two pair of boxers, socks, and the little, the little Chinese shoes we wear. All right, so you say you also had some rough moments in the cork and shoe. So can you, uh, can you explain to everybody what the cork and shoe is and, and what was going on at that time? Yeah, the shoe is like security housing unit. And to go outside to the yard or go anywhere, you got to go and get stripped out anytime you come out of your section. So what they did is... Like, we sell these, and it's going to be like one of us going to come down first. So you're going to be at that door. You know how the door is. Okay, you got the door right there. You got the tray slot. You know, put your stuff through there to search it. I had long hair at the time. Go through your hair and all that little hot cough and all that. Everybody in these sales can be just looking at you. They want to be on the door, which they are. They're waiting to go out next. So he's looking. So you do all that, and then you walk through one door, and then you go through rotunda, and you go through another door. And then you go through, you think, I think at that time it was like three doors you go through. And so you go into the yard, right? You go in the yard. So, so how, how often did you guys get yard? I think maybe like twice a week. And like so how many, how many people did they allow to go to yard each day? About like six sales, six, seven sales. About like six or seven of us, six sales. So that's like 14 people in the yard out there, a little concrete slab that's not too big. Right. And now this is when... When the yard was integrated, when they was trying to mix everybody yeah. on the same yard, so now they got these they got these groups that they know this they know that are sworn enemies on the regular yard. Yeah. And so I seen where it was something like the Serenios had had orders to anytime they got put on the yard with anybody black to basically just rush them and take off. Yeah, that came later though. That came later. At, at the time we was all we it was times back then when we was programmed together. We was out there. Uh, Playing, actually playing handball together. We wasn't supposed to play. Well, I mean, at that time, they wasn't pushing that line because we'd be out there. The yard is so big, so we playing handball, and we got like a little shower and a pistol over there. That's it. So we had developed just being on the yard, the same people every day. We all kind of had like a bond. Everybody, you know, people talking, what you were here for, what you were here for, discussing your 128G and all that old paperwork. You know how to go. Right. So we was there together at the time. But then things changed. So when, when uh, things changed, always somebody had come. Somebody to drive up. And then some things have changed. Like we all can be right here together, right. kicking it. Somebody drive up. What he in here? What he in the shoe for? He and like I said we was in four no, no, no we was in four A. This was four A, I think at the time. I was in four A. Anyway, you got somebody over here four A and four right. We was in three, we was in three, two left, something like that. Something happened over there. Everybody going to the law library, they passing kites. This happened. Some blacks beat up the homie over there. It's on with the blacks. We don't know what's going on over here because if you don't know nobody over there, the brothers wasn't communicating, let no watch out because the homies whooped on this dude over here on the bar back over here, watch out. They might be, because they definitely communicate from every building. You know what I mean? And we wasn't doing that enough. It's just we communicating with certain, like, like me and you there, I see you, what's up, bro? Okay, yeah, yeah, watch out. This happened over here. And that's how it happened. So 
they doing that, and then we don't know, and we going through the door thinking like, hey, what up, fellas? Like normal things, and like boom, 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 and doing the tower, get down, boom, with that black gun. That black gun scattered, they hurt. That's, that's that little cork that's coming out, that thing hurt. And they coming from a good angle. So later on with Corcoran, the lawsuits and stuff came because the homie got killed in there at that time. So that's what brought the attention to it. And then whatever happened later on, when they blew the whistle on themselves. So, right. so did he get killed by another uh, by another convict, or he got killed he got killed by the uh, the guard shooting guard the gun? shot him, got straight in the neck, one right. shot, one shot, boom, knocked him right there. So while he, he was fighting the South Sider. So he was on the shoe yard fighting somebody yeah. and, and, and got shot. Got shot, bro. And then, yeah, you, you see my, you see, they got the video up. I, it should be on YouTube. It's up, and you see him squabbing, and boom, one shot hit the homie in the neck and went down like that. So I, when that happened, like everybody who been to Quirk and Shoot before that happened, let people know Quirk has always been foul, bro. They always been doing scandalous stuff like that in the shoot. So I had a lot of moments in the shoot that I was like, really like, man, if I make it up out of here, you know what I mean? It's just because there's too much going on. They was they was setting us up in there too. They, they actually would put, I seen them do this. I seen them like, they'd be like, give them the mic and say, uh, 10 minutes yard, turn your lights on. Okay. You got some people, of course, always were scared. Some brothers, like, they would never turn their light on. You never go outside. And we had a situation, bro, that, that, that happened. All right, this is what happened. He had this cat in, in the unit with us. He playing his music again. This, this, is, this is way before Pelican Bay. This is back in 92. He got his Super 3 hooked up, by, tied up by the vent. He playing us to the Mark Anthony Odie show that we all listened to. He playing them Odies through the vent. After hours. It's, you know, everybody's respect. You're supposed to turn it down at a certain time. This cat, man, I'm going to tell you this dude's name because I don't give a damn. Nigga name was Dragon. He say he was from Harbor City or something like that, right? But he would not go outside to the yard. He created this buzz, and me and the homie from East Coast was my celly, t Dog from 5'9". We out here, we got the keys to the unit now and somewhere in this pod, communicating with them and our people. When this happened, even though we was the reps, they took off of us because this brother, what he was doing, and he's playing his music, disrespecting the pod, and they kept sending kites, hey, yo, what's up with your people, bro? Why they playing the music pass? You know how they do it. I, uh, at the hours. And like, we get out and we get out. I'm telling hey, homie, turn your shit down. So now we like, no, bust their ass and go, you ain't turn your shit down. Ooh. And you come outside to the yard and have it. He would never come outside. So in results of that, they took off on us. Right. And they called us one at, one at a time. So even though they told for me first, the homie go later, and they take off on him. Because he wasn't like, okay, took off on the homie. He still out of the yard. The other cats who wasn't involved, he went to the yard and same thing. To the point to where they end up moving me and him out of that unit because of that. Right. Okay, so uh, uh, describe a situation where you might have had to uh, give somebody a DP or a discipline. Yeah, man, that's uh, it happens. That's politics. You know I mean, I'm a uh, straight up. I was a politician in there. Once, once I learned how to politic in prison. From being in the higher levels with the with the big homies, it's like I learned what I was supposed to do. So when you have to make them decisions, man, you don't like it. You don't like it, but sometimes you got to do that to re keep order. Right. You got to do that. Well, can you like briefly for the people who may not know, break down, you know, uh, what what uh, politicking is? Politicking is you just pretty much okay. There's different forms of politicking because you got people that politic. Uh, feloniously, like scandalous, they do scandalous politics, and you got, but you politic in the right way, you going, you pretty much keep an order in there, that's what you're doing, you, 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 you enforcing structure, okay. you, you you're enforcing structure, you keep an order in there, keeping our people in check, you know what I mean, that's what you're doing, you're keeping your collective in check, I mean, so, but then there's other politics, I mean, it, 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 it's more to it than that, because you got to deal with the other races, because they politic, we politic, so uh, you got to be the one who's like, okay, this dude did that, he did that. We need to get him out of here. Or we got to DP him. We got to do a removal or whatever we have to do. Okay, what 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 is something that would like would, would uh, require like a removal? Like what is something that a, a convict's not supposed to do that can get him DP? Off the top, child molesters come up in there. We know about it. You got to go. Uh, you child molester, you got to go. Uh, we start. Uh, out of, every, see, here's the thing, man. Straight up, what our people in there, right? It depends on who's there. A lot of these prisons, how you dealing with stuff. So for me, during my tenure, my tour in there, it's like if you're stealing something from somebody, then you gotta go. If you're a child molester and shit like that, you gotta go. Uh, I was always the one like, okay, 
if you get into it with another somebody, your own homie or whatever, your or another brother for no reason, certain stuff you just pulling heat on people like that. You know, you gotta go. So we all politic different. Right. Uh, I politic a way that I learned from certain people who taught me. So I just carried that on. And I did things differently. And it's more so when you got to a lower level prison. But even in Calipat, you know, you, you politic in it. And in politics, and you in places like Calipat and Pelican Bay, it's a pecking order. You know, you got G homies above you, up there. You know what I mean? You got to tap in with them first. So a lot of times when I had to make a call, I tap in with the G homies first. Look, bro, this is what we doing, big homie. He got to go. We feel like this. And they're like, okay, y'all feel you. That's what it is. You got to got to do what you got to do. But you got to be considered because people got a lot of stuff going on. You got to be considered in what you're doing too at that time. But then a lot of times you'd be like fucking people. Like nowadays everybody like, hey, don't do that because they don't hit the dorm or they don't hit the unit because we got phones. Fuck that. Rules is rules. You politic and you got to get that. Everybody don't agree with that. But I learned a long time ago you got to rule with an iron fist. Yeah. So that's politics in prison. And I definitely feel like, you know, um, when I was in there and right before I, I left, it was like the structure was kind of breaking down. Like you said, man, a lot of dudes don't want to do certain things as men, though, you right. know. And right. a lot of dudes would make exceptions and, and reasons why. Right. And I think the phones uh, had a whole lot to do with it, man. Right. Some things just, you know, dudes can't be given a pass on. Right. So were you ever like in a prison where you had the keys to the yard and you was the one that was making, you know, making the um, making the decisions on, on what would and what wouldn't happen? Yeah, definitely that. Definitely that. I had the keys to the... I had the keys before I parole. I left. I, I I did my last six years, uh, my last term. I did my last six years in CRC. I had the keys to that whole facility over there as far as the Crips. You know what I mean? At one time, you know what I mean. In particular, in particular, no, the whole neighborhood card, which is our collective. You know what I mean? And the Blacks, period. But I mostly deal because that's what I'm part of. Uh, and you, you have to make them decisions sometimes. I didn't like it. A lot of people don't like me because of some of the decisions I had to make. A lot of people don't like nobody that's in politics in prison because decisions you have to make. Sometimes you got to make decisions. Sometimes some people need to get their ass whooped. Everybody disagree with that, but sometimes some dudes need their ass whooped in prison. So and, and CRC, we you we utilize that uh, the restrooms a lot. We right. we DP our people. We took care of that a lot under my watch when I was there. And and this because like I said, it goes back to the people that was there, the people that was there with me at that time, Chris Bloods. We was all on the same page, so we all worked together. So if your people did this, we did this, and and even with the, the other races. So that's how it went. Right. So now in certain situations, it's like can a dude get a DP and remain on the yard, or uh, any time a dude got DP, uh, did you feel like it was time for him to go? It depends on the situation. A lot of people got DP for a lot of different stuff, and we let them stay. You know, but nothing. Everything everything don't warrants a removal, uh, but but some things do. Some things you do, you gotta go. You know, some people accepted that and just rolled it up. They knew it. You know what I mean? And I didn't tell them, like, bro, you already know what's coming to you. So some people just tap out. They already know. But, you know, that's just how it is, man. That's the thing about prison, man. You get put in, when you, when, like, for somebody like myself, okay, I had a D number. And, you know, I've been doing time in prison since 88. So I'm dealing with people who just started doing time since the 90s and the 2000s. Right. They don't know what I know. They haven't been where I've been. And, I didn't know what I knew until I went to where I went, uh -huh. so around a lot of different people. So then, you know, like I said earlier, like, as I hit to a level four prison, I grew. So now I'm in a situation to where I got to call the shots. I got to, this we got to get done. Right. So it just falls upon us. I didn't like it, but that's life in prison. Somebody got to do it. Right. And it just fell upon me to do it. What about, okay, um, so you say you've been locked, you was you had started doing time back in the days and had a uh, D number. Can you tell us about, like, some of the more notable uh, Crips or Bloods that you may have done time with, dudes that, you know, got these real um, well-known names in, in, you know, in the game banging community? Well, I always got to start with my homies because, uh, like I say again, my homie uh, Spark and Lavelle, and just, you know, their history right there alone uh, they, they're my homie neck bone, but then so many people I didn't done time with uh, Bam from uh, A Trey Hoover, I didn't done Puff with uh, I mean time with Big Puff from A Trey Gangsta, man I did, the homie La La from Six Deuces Coast, man I can just name them up. Dan Tanner from Insane, man it's man there's so many people that Hawk from Nine Four Hoover, it's just so many people, man Peabody from Denver Lane, man uh, SS from Denver Lane, Doughboy from Crenshaw Mafia, so many people that I didn't did time with, and, and it's a trip because a lot of people uh, figured that uh, 
you're dealing with these cats and these cats at one time people thought these are your enemy that's what people told that was your enemy these dudes ain't my enemies these dudes is good people but it's so many people I done been around, man. I'm leaving people out. I'm just thinking, because you figure, bro, I, Lunatic Frank from 60s, man. There's so many people. Uh, I done just, man, I done been in a lot of level four prisons, bro. So I done been around a, a whole lot of them, man. A lot of them. Right. So especially at these level fours then with all these dudes who like who from different hoods, who who like be beefing on the street. So it's more of a black thing when they get in there, right? So everybody's more more together or how does that work? Yeah, more so, man. It, it like Like, okay, starts with... You're a crip coming in. My generation, I don't know too much about what they're doing it now, but my generation, you're a crip, you're a crip. You know what I mean? I come in there like we respect that crip, and that's what it's all about. You, you, you Crips ain't tripping in here on each other. We good, which is cool because now I learned to deal with these dudes, these other crips, and we create the bond. And at the same time, from that grows, and we black. However, it's backwards because we black first before we crips and bloods. Right. But that's just the introduction because I was already a crip before I went to prison. I mean, so so I get in there, I'm already got this mentality, like, I'll mess with these dudes because they're from over there. But on the crib tip, yo, know, my first term in prison, uh, somebody else, my my everyday dude I ran on the yard at one time was a uh, little baldy from A. Trey Hoover. That was, like, my dog, you know what I mean? It's M&D train from Butler, rest in peace. So, you know, that was on some crib shit. This is when Hoover's was crips before they became criminals. But, you know, so, but still, a lot of dudes you formed bonds with at that time. Then, of course, it's the black thing, too. That starts... From the beginning, because we are, of course, but that's how that you know the bond start, man. Right. Just go from there with. Well, when you first hit the pen, was there a lot of like, was there any friction between the BGF and the Crips? Yeah, it, it was. It was more like I wasn't in the prison system at the time when that was really still cracking. That was really going on like in the early eighties. I got to the prison system my first time. In, I hit the prison system, like I said, nineteen eighty eight. So at that time. All these prison gang wars and stuff was really kind of like, you know, it wasn't really going on no more. Right. But the BGFs was around, and then you had people that want to be BGFs. So the people that want to be BGF, want to be BGFs, that's where the friction was coming from. Because you got these dudes now, anybody from Oakland that was like 415, anywhere up that way, for some reason they had a problem with Crips. They was cool with Bloods, they had a problem with Crips. Of course, that go back to the early 80s when the homies was warm, the Crips was warm with the BGFs. So, you know, that spills over. So you get certain people that's, that was that was in the prison system. When I came through, that was still trying to uh, uh, perpetuate that. You right. know what I mean, they was advocating that BS. And and, uh, and you got the black dudes. You, you might got an older cat who was around, but he wasn't active. So he telling these younger dudes on y'all, we BGS, we don't like them. So, and, and um, real quick, they that was at a time when in the prison system, in particular Jamestown, they gave out red rags. Mm -hmm. So all them dudes had red rags. We all had rags, but... The, B, the BGFs and the 415 dudes, they wore red, and then, of course, we had blue. Right. Well, let me ask you this, man, because I get asked this a lot, and actually, this was also one of my uh, one of my goals in prison, but I never got around to it, man. Were you ever fortunate enough to uh, to uh, have relations or, or you know, um, interact with a female, with a female CO? Yeah. Hey, man, that's crazy because I think we all did. <laughs> I think everybody in prison wanted that, man. We sitting there, we see these guards and these staff members. We all want to knock something, you know what I mean? But fortunately, I did, bro. It, it It's like, uh, I think that was 2012, 2011, somewhere around there. I did. I was in Donovan in San Diego, and I worked in this, the medical.